Morning everyone, uh, this is The Shed. Um, thanks to everyone who's uh, commented on and contributed towards the session thing I did yesterday. That was really a lot of fun. Um, it's quite a lot of video editing, so I'm not sure I can do it every single uh, every single day. But uh, anyway, yesterday I did have a little bit of time to do something else as well. Um, I popped down to my allotment, so I thought I'd just give you a little insight into what I'm doing out on the ranch. Um, uh, the, the video quality is interesting. I didn't realise quite how windy it was until I listened back to some of the footage. So, uh, good luck hearing what I'm saying. But it's uh, well, have a look at it. Uh, we've got quite a lot of things going on here. Um, it's <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. I was supposed to be on tour till May. Can you imagine what it would have looked like then? Um, this is all cultivated last year, so uh, if you're thinking of starting a plot yourself, <laughs> if you let it go over the winter, look at the weeds that have come here. This is where my uh, peppers and beans were planted last year, and it's just gone crazy. It's, the soil here is so fertile. I'm very lucky, um, but the weeds love it. Um, and here was something I was trying to overwinter, but it's unfortunately the animals are well, not done too well. These were purple sprouting broccoli, and look what's happened to them. See where the root, the top would be, where it would start producing the broccoli. They've all been eaten. The tooth marks there, it's all by little tiny teeth so it's not rats it's not rabbits that's voles or mice that one's been absolutely stripped and even the bark has been stripped down like the green stuff on the outside of the main stem that's completely dead um, got a few uh, little uh, purslanes claytonia uh, self seeded there there's all sorts but um yeah look at that those are my bean connecting hoops so um, if you can avoid the mess, I'll take you around some of the things that are actually still giving me stuff. Uh, this is some more Claytonia. It's a lawn of it. Oh, look at this. Inside this hoop, protected all the shadows on it. There we go. It's just almost monoculture of Claytonia, which you can eat. And the leaves, if I pick your leaf and show you. There. Light, I'm getting the light. Um, this is a Claytonia leaf. I'll focus. Um, so, yeah, that's very slightly succulent. They don't taste of, hmm, yeah, don't taste of an awful lot. But they're a good neutral salad green on which to put more spicy things. Down here, we've got some perennial stuff still going on. That's the uh, medlar tree coming into bud. That's quite new, that's only been there a year or two. In the shade here, my fig. Still got some fig on it, but um, the shoots for next year are coming. Let's go into the back part of the allotment. It's actually what used to be two allotments, but I've taken both sides on. Oh no, what have we got in here? This is... Well, I haven't been doing anything with it since the storms and uh, my perennial kale, Taunton Dean cage to keep keep the pigeons away have uh, it's completely collapsed in the wind. Um, I'm not sure that's going to be worth building again. The plant inside it is incredibly old. It's probably about four or five years old, they can lift seven if you keep pruning them down. Right, there's the Taunton Dean plant itself, you can see it's got one massive stem and it actually comes up to about eight, nine feet tall. In here it's been supported until the thing fell down. So uh, what I'm going to do is take, some, take a few cuttings of that and plant, start a new one and build them a new, a new place to live fruit corner, haven't pruned back properly yet, um, got some Saskatoon bushes here, two of those, um, in the middle of a herb bed, lots of thyme and oregano, it's overwintered really well, pears coming into bud, 
can be in blossom soon. And there we have um, Japanese wine berries and black raspberries. Uh, and then some gooseberries behind it. One of those plants has died this year. Um, oh, something actually growing. You can see them amongst the weeds. Um, I'll just show you this. This is a uh, turnip. The greens and the top of the turnip have been completely eaten away by voles or mice. But here we've got the autumn sun beans, which will be enough to give an early crop. I've got some more modules ready to go in. And those have come up. Uh, they've been battered about by the winds we get here. If you look at the field behind. It's right in the middle of nowhere, and the wind off that field is ferocious. So that's why these are small at the moment. They've been unprotected very hardy plants. If you put most things out in this weather, they can not, not, not make it. <laughs> um, the artichokes this year haven't died back completely, and that's because we haven't had much of a frost at all. That's great, that means they'll get going early, we'll get really early artichokes this next year, unless we get a horrible late frost. Um, what happens with these plants actually is, you see that the flowering bit from last year here that's died and then a load of new ones spring from the base and you'll get new heads coming off those so the plant needs dividing every now and again but when it frosts what happens is the outer leaves will die back in the frost um, and protect like the heart in the middle um, so they can look dead but be alive in the middle still under these collapsed hoops again um, casualty of the wind. There's two different varieties of leek. Uh, that one's actually standing up. <laughs> That's um, Bleu de Soleil is the variety of leek there and these are Jean de Pointu, I think, uh, from the Real Seeds Company. Uh, different, they're actually subtly different flavours. Um, these ones are good. I'll dig some up in a minute and show you. Uh, oh yeah, blueberries. So the blueberries are coming into flower. Need to weed the other side of that bed where I haven't been able to get to. Look at all the nettles coming in. Never ending task the weeding, but I've got four lovely blueberry plants and actually before I went away on tour, I just chanced my arm and stuck between two in here, hardened cuttings um, into the ground um, to see if any of them would root. I'm looking for some more, especially these two bushes at the end of it, lovely big nice delicious flavour of blueberries so I want to get some more of those um, to plant somewhere else as you can see it's a big allotment uh, it's an uh, old-fashioned size uh, ah what have we got under here okay there's a few things actually going on in these beds one is some tiny self-seeded lettuces which are actually coming on. There's some lettuces that were here from last year died back and they, they'll give a little crop before they go to flower. And then what I was planning on planting in this bed actually was these uh, overwintering onions. Now you know you get Japanese overwintering onions to plant from such people who can't see them, they're so small at the moment. Um, I did these ones from seed, planting them in August and then pots and then putting them out in the autumn. Now, not many of them have taken, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so we've got some spinach going on here, in amongst the horrendous weeds, which I will be getting on with. Under this fleece, we have let's just get some, some the things that should go with the purslane really well. These are for salads as well. Look at these. They're doing brilliantly. This is a a mustard variety. Some, I think these are dahlias coming up. Um, yes, there is a dahlia plant there. See, it's not very organised here, but these these leaves here have, made, have been amazing. You can cook them as a, a stir fry green. They were planted at September, I think, um, and they've overwintered beautifully. It's called nine-headed bird, and well, that's got some flavour. Really punchy mustard flavour, like those spicy things you get in packets of salad. The bigger leaves can be a bit overpowering if you're not used to them, but uh, they oh, 
very nice. Um, you can also cook those like a sort of kale green in stir fries and things. Very good for you. They grow fast, really cold, hardy. And I can see why they're called green naked bird now as well. Because they make kind of lots of little, each plant splits off and makes lots of little heads, which I presume will make a flower on the end of them. Um, yeah. So yeah, I also planted my garlic in here. So when these go, it's like a multi-cropping thing. I'll weed around here and the garlic will be good to go. It's been under the fleece all winter. Um, got some other varieties in here. I can get some opened up. Take the fleece off. There's some rocket under there. Um, this one's not done so well. This is called... Um, I don't know what it's called, is it a golden frill, I think. We have just some other ver ver varieties in here. Look at these, how the grass is done <laughs> under the, um, look at that. Yeah, so the weeds like the fleece as well, not surprised. Um, what have we got further down here? Now some more of those overwintering onions. I'm probably just going to leave them in place and plant around them. Now, this, which looks like a huge mess, is my horseradish patch, and uh, yeah, that's a weed, really. It's quite difficult to dig up. <laughs> um, I do like horseradish, but there's only so much of it. It's the asparagus bed that has been weeded already, and it's not looking too bad. No, it's not warm enough for the shoots to have come up yet, and I'll probably put some manure on that before. Too unwieldy. And in here, well, this was a strawberry bed, but um, the strawberries in here had sort of served their time. There's a few left. A really nice variety called Mara de Bois, but I thought I'd just put all my perennial stuff in here so I've got some interesting perennials so uh, these are going to be um, oh I know what these are yeah they're um, uh, Babington's leeks so unlike a normal leek these have got a big bulb underground looks like an elephant garlic and uh, every late winter they start coming up like the as daffodils do and they uh, eventually form clumps and what you can do is you can rootle around and go down to where the bulb is you can feel where that is by your hand and then uh, you can uh, just cut it with a knife at that level of the harvest it and still have the plant so that's why it's a perennial leaf there's a few wild garlics I liberated from a woodland and they've been eaten by someone look someone likes those um these are i think called poirot perpetual which i'm assuming are going to be the same as the babington's leeks but a different variety from france and you can see there's a few scrubby little strawberries left in there not much else but there are skirrets in here as well they haven't popped back up again yet but i've left the roots in to grow for another year skirrets are like a Kind of perennial carrot parsnip thing. They will uh, make a um, huge amount of foliage and uh, seed heads at the top, so they'll probably seed themselves as well. Which is safe, so the seeds. But they, um, they're like a finger shaped little thin carrot, but each one plants got loads of them on. Um, they are really nice to eat. Uh, there's a spinach, I've heavily cropped this, this was winter spinach. But as you can see, I've pretty much neglected it, so uh, the work starts now. And So that was it, and I didn't end up um, with absolutely nothing at the end of that. I did some harvesting. Uh, here is what I've harvested. Uh, look. Now I didn't nick the shopping basket, that came from home base, you know all the home bases that closed down, they clo they sold off all their shop fittings as well. Um, so I bought that, there's some leeks still nicely from the ground, these are the uh, yellow leaved ones that I showed you first. 
Um, most of them are in good condition. I'm going to make a leek and potato soup, I think. Um, but as you can see, some of them have got this. This is a flower stalk. See? Flower stalk on the um, end. And that grows right up in the middle of the leek from the bottom and it kind of makes them not very nice textured to eat. But they're absolutely fine for soup if you're going to blitz it up afterwards. So for a leek and potato soup, don't waste these ones. <laughs> they're fine. Um, and it's they're one of these... 12 month crops um, so I've already started off my leeks for next year um, in uh, seeds uh, so yeah you're planting them at the same time as you're harvesting them which is yeah <laughs> it's a long time to wait but it's an investment worth making because leeks are nice all right thank you for watching I'll see you next time <laughs>